What's up everybody? It's Matt from HowToMotorcycleRepair.com. Uh, in today's video we're going to be doing a compression test and then a leak down test on this CB550 motor in front of us here. So for the gauge, for the compression gauge, I use this Actron uh, compression tester and I forget the model number but I'll definitely put a little note at the bottom of the video here and also a link in the video description and in my blog post on where you can purchase this. I bought it from Amazon for about 40 bucks and the reason I like this one so much is first of all a compression tester needs to have a Schrader valve right at the end here meaning it, it won't add any volume to the cylinder head and therefore give you lower readings. I've seen some testers where they have this super long hose and they have the Schrader valve up by the gauge. So now all this volume here is added to your compression ratio uh, calculation and, and the, the readings are, are wrong. So you make sure you have the Schrader valve here. And then we're also going to use this for a leak down test. We're going to convert it to a leak down tester just by removing the Schrader valve. Uh, secondly, if you work on a lot of motorcycles, you're going to find that you're going to need different adapters. Um, typically they come with a 14 mil adapter standard, but this one comes with a, a extended 14, a 12, and a 10. So we're going to need the 12 millimeter adapter for this model. And then it comes with extra parts, O-rings and... So what I like to do is just put a little WD-40 on my O-rings because it makes them last longer. I've had this for years now and I've never had to change the O-rings. Alright, so a couple things about this motor. Uh, it's been sitting for 10 years. Hopefully indoors. There's no carburetors on here, so we're going to get maximum airflow into the engine during the compression test. If you have the carbs mounted on the bike, you're going to want to hold the throttle wide open because that will let air in. If you don't, the throttle blades or the slides are closed, air doesn't enter and you're going to get lower readings. Also, you're going to want to perform this hot. There's no way I can do that because this motor hasn't ran in 10 years. It needs a bunch of work and actually it needs a head gasket and we're going to be, I'm going to do another video on a, a complete top end regasketing video. Um, which will be helpful if you're rebuilding the top end. But really, what's really common on these CB550s is the, <clears throat> the O-ring passages on the ends here uh, get dry, but it only start to leak. And what we're going to find is a low compression, and we're going to find leaky valves here. So th that's very common on these models, and uh, that's just something that needs to be addressed. All right, so we're going to start off with a cold compression test, and we're also going to start off with a dry test. We're going to add a little oil after the first test to see if things improve. Okay, so I'm going to do the number two cylinder because I think that was the worst one. So what I'm going to do is just screw in my tester here pretty tight. Now I'm only going to do one cylinder for purposes of this video, but you're going to want to repeat it to all of them and you're going to want to take notes so you know, um, you know which one's which. And it, and the cylinders are always numbered one through four, left to right. As you're sitting on the bike, the left cylinder is number one, then two, three, and four. All right, let's crank it up. All right, we're showing 95 PSI. That's horrible. Um, this bike should have 170 PSI per the manual. All right, so great. We got a compression reading. We got 95 PSI. Now what? That doesn't tell us much. Um, it tells us there's a problem, but it doesn't tell us where the problem lies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt a little oil in the cylinder, and what that's going to do is provide a temporary seal on the piston rings. If you get higher readings during a wet test, then you can conclude that the piston rings are leaking, and they need attention. If you get the same results, then you can conclude that the valves are the culprit. Okay, so just put a, a couple squirts down there. I had to prime that. I didn't pump a whole bunch in there. You probably want to put like a, a teaspoon or less in there.
right, we have a slightly higher reading of 105. So that tells us that, you know, a little bit's leaking past the rings as well. And considering it's been sitting for 10 years, um, you know, we probably have issues across the board on this thing. All right, so it didn't jump up to 170. I don't think it ever will, but uh, so we have some issues to further diagnose. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do for a leak down test is remove this Schrader valve. I have this little valve core tool. It's just a tire Schrader valve tool. What I'm gonna do is just remove it. So now this, this just allows full air to, to bypass. All right, I have another video on how to build a DIY leak tester. But let me just quickly explain, but you're definitely gonna wanna check out that video because this is super easy to build. So I have a pressure regulator, air comes in, I can regulate this down. This is the only custom piece really. This I filled with epoxy about, you know, this is just a two, three inch long nipple. You cap it, you plug it with epoxy, half inch, quarter inch, whatever. Then you put a, you drill a hole in it, a number 60 drill bit, it's a 40 thou orifice. And that is just some kind of restriction that is good up to a thousand cubic inches or something like that. I can link to the Wikipedia link, you can read more about it. So that's only, the only real magical thing about this. And then here's a T with a gauge. So I have my air, I made a couple modifications to this too. I used to hook this on here, okay, and run it at 100 PSI. The problem with shooting 100 PSI in your engine is sometimes it will roll it over. And if you're working alone like myself, it's hard to hold the engine at top dead center especially on single piston engines, um, it'll want to roll over on you. So what I did is I bought a lower pressure gauge. I think I bought this in the plumbing department at Home Depot. It's zero to 30 PSI. And currently I'm gonna set this to 20. It really, or it just jumped up to 22. But what you want is you want to set pressure, whatever it is, the engine's gonna leak some, and then you just do math. 100 PSI makes it super easy math. If you have 100 PSI starting, you pump air in and you get 90. 100 minus 90 is 10, divided by 100 is 10% leakage. You're just gonna have to plug and chug different numbers. <clears throat> so my incoming air pressure is 40 PSI. You want it slightly higher than your set pressure, okay? So now what we're gonna do Pop this guy back in here and it's going to allow full air to just enter. Okay, obviously the, the exhaust is off, the carbs are off, so any air leaking um, out the exhaust or the intake can be easily noted. But um, if you have the exhaust on, the carbs on, and also you're going to want to open the oil filler cap or some other area that is has access to your crankcase because that's where the oil the air can go well, let's talk about that for a second the air okay at top dead center both your valves are closed you have the head gasket sealing the combustion chamber and um, the air technically can't escape so you got your intake valve your exhaust valve your head gasket and then you have the piston rings so air can go down into the crankcase out the intake out the exhaust or out the head gasket. Now, this head gasket needs to be replaced no matter what, but what you would probably want to do is also get some soapy water and spray it around here to see if you have a head gasket leak. All right, so let's go ahead and hook this up. I haven't put the motor at TDC yet. I'll do that while it's leaking. Okay, so you can hear a leak, but we don't know if it's at top dead center or anything. So I'm just gonna roll the motor over till I get top dead center. I'm coming up to top dead center here. And what's nice about this low pressure, it does not
roll the motor over. All right, so I'm at top dead center, and you can hear a nice leak. And if you look at the pressure gauge, it's at 12. So we were at 22, now we're at 12. Let's see where the air is coming from. See, I put my finger in the exhaust, and you can just hear it. So we have an exhaust valve leak. Let's do some quick math here and see what leakage it is. So we got 22 minus 12 equals 10 divided by 22. We have 45 percent leakage. Okay, you're going to get 0.45 as the number. Let's just see if 22 minus 12, right? Divided, it's 10 divided by 22. It's 45 times 100 to convert to percent, and we have 45 and a half percent leakage. That's horrible. You don't want any more than 20. 5% leakage is an engine in excellent health, 10 is normal, and then as it wears, you want to go up to 20%, and then it's deemed you need to rebuild or you got to do something. All right, so now we have this leak. Um, let's see, what's really common on these models is, um, is carbon builds up on the valves. So what we can do here, I don't know if this is going to help or not, I don't know if it's too far gone or not, but what you can do is you can put a piece of wood right on the valve and just give it a, some light blows to see if it's carbon related and if it'll just knock it loose. And you just want to give it a couple light taps. And all of a sudden our number jumped up to 15. So we went from 12 to 15. So that's good news because now it tells me that it's, it is just junk. And also this valve is loose. Hear that? So that tells me there's valve lash, meaning this cam is not holding the valve open. I probably should have done that first before beating on it. But let's see if we can improve on the numbers a little more. You don't want to go crazy because the piston's at top dead center. All right, so slightly improving, 16. Let's just do the math and see where we end up. Okay, so it's uh, 22 minus 16 is 6 divided by 22. And now we're at 27%. So I can probably keep doing that and get it better. Or I, I would even be okay with maybe reassembling the motor and running some seafoam through it. I mean, if you don't want to take this all apart. I have to take this apart because the head gasket is, is shot. So the head's going to be off. I might as well take apart the valves, sew to blast everything, and uh, install new valve guide seals and whatnot. Um, but you can see how I just almost made this motor um, usable again just by tapping that with a hammer. All right, guys, so we're done reassembling the motor. We regasketed everything, um, honed the cylinder, all new gaskets, lapped the valves, decarbonized everything, and we're going to redo a compression check. Now, I've got 117 PSI on the um, test prior to even touching this motor on the number one cylinder. Got 97 on number two, 140, and 140. Now this engine is cold, the rings need to seat into the uh, new crosshatch and all that good stuff, but uh, let's just see what we get on the bench. Alright, number one has 150, excellent. Now 150 to 170 is what the service manual calls for as normal, so that's, that's good.
right, this was the worst cylinder and we're at 160. So that's awesome. Huge improvement there. Okay, 160, 165 on that one. And guys, during this test, I do squirt a little oil in the cylinders. I mean, they're kind of bone dry, if you will, because it's a fresh motor. So, I mean, you know, other than assembly lube, you gotta, you gotta add a little more, otherwise, I'm talking dry cylinder walls, there's nothing to seal. We got 170 on that one. So all in all, everything increased. It's where it should be. Again, the motor's cold. It's not broken in, if you will. So, I mean, but it's a huge improvement over the numbers we had. So we had 117 on number one. We went to 150. Uh, 97 on number two, which was horrible. Got up to 160. 140 on number three and four, and they went to 161. 70 respectively and you know I did squirt a little oil in there and uh, it's not broken in and it's not hot but uh, it shows us that it did um, increase so that's good all right so we're gonna do the leak down test again starting is roughly 22 psi let's just make sure I have this at TDC It's a top dead center. I hear very little leakage. Again, we were at 22 and now we are at 21. So let's do that math. One divided by 22 times 100. We're at four and a half percent leakage. We were at 30 percent. Now we're at excellent numbers here. So all it takes is uh, a little bit of work, regassing the motor, lapping, honing, and uh, you got yourself a usable motor here. This thing's done.